says in Isaiah 61 that the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me and Jesus said those words about himself and then he gave us his spirit and so we can say those same words upon us the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon us the word of God also says that where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom and I'd like you to look at your neighbor and from a distance just tell them freedom is here We've been hearing so much about COVID being here and we understand that it's something we're dealing with, but you know what else we need to remind ourselves is that the freedom of the Lord is among us. Amen, church. So we're going to sing both now. And this song says, Oh, we have a man singing and praising God. over the screen on Facebook and everyone that's listening on WhatsApp, ask each other, are you ready to praise church? All right, let's praise him. Let's celebrate the freedom of the Lord that is a 
grace that has been prepared for us. And as the band continues to play out loud for us, we just praise him with a dance. Can we do that, church? All right, let's praise him. Let's move to the left. Let's move to the right. Let's celebrate Jesus with a dance this morning. up until we receive your joy. We receive your freedom. We receive your encouragement. We receive your healing. We receive your strength. Come on, church. Let's praise him. Let's receive from him the spirit of the sovereign Lord is here, and he's excited to be with us. Let's receive from him. We praise him. We receive from you. We praise you. We exalt your presence, God. We exalt who you are, what you have saved, God. We exalt that, Lord, we lift up peace and joy and freedom and truth and healing in this place. God, we exalt you, your goodness, your power, your salvation, God. We exalt you, we exalt you, we fix our eyes on you, God. We lift you up. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you, God, that you have promised to go with us, Lord, to be with us. You have said, Jesus, I will be with you to the very end of the age. Church, this morning, we're going to take some time to pray together. You know, the reason why we pray is because we have a Father who listens and who answers. We don't do this to fill space or time because it's the right thing to do, but we do it because we need and so I'm not sure what it is for us in this place, but I'd like us to think about what that thing is, that need. Maybe it's healing in your body. Some of us might be sick or no friends or family that are sick right now. Maybe it's financial provision. Maybe it's peace in your marriage. Maybe it's salvation for your family. Whatever the need is, maybe it's wisdom to live life and to lead during these uncertain times. Whatever that need is, we come before our Father and we make our requests known to Him. So I'm going to encourage you to think about whatever that is. And I'd like to encourage you as well, if you feel comfortable, just lift up your hands to your Father like a child saying, Father, I come. My hands are empty and I need you to fill them. I need your love. I need your peace. I need your wisdom. I need your encouragement. And then we'll pray together. Let's go ahead and lift up our hands and let's pray to our Father. Father, we come before you. We thank you that you invite us to come to ask for our daily bread.
We're going to do something that we did last week that is a bit different, but that makes it even the more fun. And so even though we can hug and we can shake hands, we're going to walk around and from a distance, we're going to spread some love. Can we do that, church? Can we do that, church? All right, let's go ahead and spread some love during our meet and greet time. Everybody walking around. It's great to have everyone in the lounge. Lounge, can I hear you? Ah, there they are. They're there. We have some people joining us on the veranda. It's good to have you guys here in this room. We're filling up all of the spaces that we can. And of course, it's good to have everyone joining us. Encouraged and you received some love and you gave some love. Before we go into the message, I'd just like to share a little bit on the offer. And the guys can put up the offering slide, and I'd actually like to highlight that verse that we usually see up there, Isaiah 32, verse 8. It says, generous people plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. I'd like to, first of all, just say thank you to everyone who has been planning to be generous. Because when things get uncertain, if you don't have a plan, it's easy to then move away from it. And even in these times of uncertain world challenges, I'd like to appreciate and honor and celebrate all of those who have plans to continue to tithe, those who have plans to continue to give, so that we can continue to be the church, to gather like this, and to support one another. And I'd like to encourage us, church, to remember to plan to be generous. Planning looks like simple things, like when the money comes in, that is not when I'm thinking about, should I tithe or who am I going to give to? But right now, when we're in this place, when I'm in my quiet time, I talk to God about it before the time comes for me to give. That is some of what planning looks like. Planning looks like asking the Holy Spirit during the month, Holy Spirit, highlight to me, show me the places where you would like me to give. Show me that neighbor who's in need. Show me that area where I can give. Planning looks like if you're struggling, you know, with tithing is returning a 10% to the Lord. And sometimes, believe me, I know that giving 10% means that the 90% may not even be enough for rent. I understand that. And so planning looks like going to God and saying, God, this month, what I have is not going to be enough to take 10% out. What should we do about this? Planning looks like preparing in advance, talking to God about it, and asking Him to help us so that we can't actually do the giving on the own plan. And we do that in heaven, the scripture says, we stand firm in our generosity. When we invite God into 
our finances by planning, he actually strengthens us. And so whether we have this much or we have that much, there's a stability that we have because our Father is with us. Remember, like we learned last week, we remain with him, we receive from him, and then we can stand firm in him. So the ways to give are on the screen. We have the ba- um, the box in the back, and you can just drop your offering in there. We also have the mobile money option. The phone number is there, and if you need it, you can reach out to the Next Steps team or any of the leaders. And then we have EFT as well. The information is on the screen, um, and you can get it from any of our teams if you need it. Let's go ahead and pray over all of the giving that has been given already and that will continue to be um, given. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you have promised that if we plan with you, we will stand firm. And so I pray over every single person, Lord God, that has given, Lord God, in every form, Father, that has returned their tithe faithfully during difficult times. God, every person that has chosen to be faithful, Lord God, to listen for your voice and be generous, Lord God, even when it doesn't make sense. Every person that has sacrificed, Lord God, every person that has been consistent, Lord, I pray, Father, over every single one of us that will experience the stability and the firmness that you promised, that, God, even though all around us it's falling, God, we would not be shaken because we are standing firm in you. And Father, all that is received, all that is given, God, may you bless it. God, may you cause it, Father, to increase. Lord, may it be like that five loaves and that two fish. God, we give it to you, God, that as it is broken up, Lord, may it feed more, God, Father, than we could ever have imagined. May it do the work that you have destined for it to do, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well... This morning, we're beginning a new series called Made for More. Can everybody say, I was made for more? I was made for more. Yes. Even you guys watching us online, don't just sit there watching us say, I was made for more. Can you say, I was made for more? I was made for more. All right. Lou is ready to share this message. So please, let's give him a huge round of applause as he comes up. Good morning, Liberty Church. It is a wonderful morning to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. It is wonderful for many things, including one less serious thing, but still more exciting. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord today to celebrate as well. But Arsenal won the FA Cup. I thought I was going to hear an amen. Uh, Menzi is not very excited with me because we, we beat his team. But I think the guys in the lounge are excited with me. Can I hear the lounge shout amen? Yeah. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I know yesterday we had such a lovely time with mom and dad, Zinti and I. We had to fight a bit with internet, but eventually Arsenal won. You know, it doesn't happen often, so when it happens, we make sure we milk it a little bit. Today, like Cindy said, we are beginning a new series, and I'm really excited about this series, because as human beings, we have desires, and this is universal. Everybody who is still living has got this desire, and today I'm setting the foundation for this series, Made for More. This series is not for your neighbor. Can I hear an amen, somebody? This series is not for the person next door. This series is for me. I was made for more. You know, when Jesus was being sent, God had you in mind. God had the whole world in mind. But God also had Neville in mind. By name. God had Fufu in mind. God did Zach in mind. So as we are talking about this series, I would like to invite us to make it personal. Amen, Bazaban. I would like us to say, yes, we were all made for more. But today, Lord, it starts with me. Amen. So if you have your Bible, I would like for you to open to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. We invited the church to be reading through the book of Ephesians. Today I'll be preaching mainly on chapter 1, and then we'll go to chapter 2, 
spiritual gift in the heavenly places. Not some, but every. So if we desire more blessing, it comes from more Jesus. There is nothing new that we are going to be told that surpasses this truth that Jesus, through Jesus, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. However, I don't know about you, but when I look at my life, I can't really say that I've experienced this fullness. I've definitely experienced a part. I've seen some blessings, but I haven't experienced this fullness. Because I'm going to define in a moment what he means when he says this. So we need to ask ourselves that if we haven't yet experienced the fullness of this promise, how do we get there? Because we are saying we are made for more. How do we actually experience more? Because when we try and experience more outside of Jesus, we find ourselves experiencing the pain and disappointment like I've spoken about. But in Christ, and we are already in Christ, we haven't yet experienced it. How do we come to that place? As we do, I just want to define these spiritual blessings. Because this verse, sometimes you can just kind of skim over it because it has got many terms. But let me try and break it down and explain it a bit simply. It says, in our union with Christ, we have been blessed by being given every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. This is what this means. It means we have been given access and ownership to everything that we see in heaven. That is why Jesus instructs us to pray this way. Listen to Jesus' instruction. When the disciples say, teach us how to pray, this is what Jesus says. Pray this way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. And then, as it is, and as Jesus pray, Jesus instructs us, pray that the way that things are on earth, should mirror how it is in heaven. That is why I came. I came to give you every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So the trick is simply to do this. Look at heaven. What do you see? It has been given to you. So I look at heaven. I thought about heaven. The first thing that I saw in heaven, no sickness. Do we agree? No sickness. That is a blessing for you. And yet, we find ourselves sick sometimes. Would we agree? Let's be honest Christians. Huh? We, we, we see this picture in heaven. We see Ephesians 1 verse 6. You have been given every spiritual blessing. No sickness. But ah, sometimes I am sick. Here's another example. Streets of gold. I look in heaven. I see streets of gold. Ephesians 1 verse 6 says, You have been blessed with the same riches. But I don't know about you. There are some times when the man earns before the man earns. Right? There are some times when between 15 and the day when I get paid, I'm sweating every morning. So we, we get to this place where there's a dilemma. Where the Bible says, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And yet we don't quite see it that way in our lives. And that is where the enemy comes in and says, I have a better way. He comes in and says, yeah, Jesus, yes. But also, let's go and talk to the Sangom. And so you find people are in church on Sunday morning. And then on Sunday evening, there are some way where it doesn't quite line up. So I, I was reading through this and being like, Lord, if we have been placed with every spiritual gift in the heavenly places, why is my life like this? Why am I disappointed? I preach about this, Jesus. I pray for people. I lay my hands on people. How come? But when we look at our lives, we, we, we are slightly challenged.
challenged by our circumstances. So the secret to understanding this, as I was reading it, how we have been blessed with all of these pretty awesome things, but we don't quite yet see them in our lives. I think the answer to this was the observation that I made as I was reading this chapter. I read this chapter a couple times, and I observed something. I observed that Paul says in Christ ten times. He says it ten times. In Christ, you've been placed in Christ, this, 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 in Christ. No, 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 in Christ. He says it ten times. In a chapter, that is called 20 verses. And that spoke to me. That if for every two verses, one of them is called in Christ, the secret to understanding how to work out the life of man lives in the two better of understanding what it means to be in Christ. Because to be in Christ doesn't necessarily just mean coming to church on Sunday. I thought I was going to hear an amen. I'm talking to those who have arrived in church on Sunday morning. I'm talking to those who have logged in on Facebook and say, we need to get better at understanding what it means to be um Christ. Right? Because just coming to church on Sunday morning does not necessarily mean in Christ. We need to get better at this. We need to go from a place of inheriting this religion to a place of having a genuine relationship, life-giving relationship with Christ. I am not teaching new things today. If we are going to understand what it means for us to be made for more, we need to go back to the basics. Amen. We need to go back to the foundations. Because if you, if you know that building, you know that if the foundation is not right, the Bible is not right to build in this. And first there is a crack. You don't need the foundation, the crack becomes bigger. But eventually the house falls down. So Jesus Christ, as powerful as he is, for us, to be at a place where we experience the fullness of Him, we need to get better at understanding what it means to be in Christ. Amen. We need a, a kind of Christianity that goes beyond just an inherited revelation. Thank God for the times when I can stand up here and activate us to understand certain things in the Word of God. But I'm believing for a personal experience with Jesus Christ. I'm believing for a personal relationship where I know that I know that I know that I am in Christ. The better we get at knowing what it means to be in Christ, the more we begin to see the fulfillment of these blessings. We are there, and it is true. But do we truly understand what it means to be in Christ? To understand what it means to be in Christ, I thought about it as that. Alright, if this is going to be the main part of my message, how do I illustrate it? I want you to imagine for a second, if I just say to you, if you go inside pick and pay, you will get free groceries. Just take a moment, think about that. You hear me making announcements. If you go inside pick and pay, you will get free groceries. What will you do when the service is done? Shout it out like you believe it. Right? What will you do when you are home and your groceries are finished? Right? Will you debate it? Right? What will you do when you see people who don't have groceries? Right? The moment I know that there is free groceries in pick and pay to influence the way that I live, I want us to know church. Inside Jesus Christ, you have everything that you need for life. There is no teaching that is better.
better than that. I wish I could say, oh no, I found this new one, this better one. There isn't. Inside Jesus, the Jesus that you received when you first got said, right there, you have everything. So what are you going to do when the service is done? How is that Jesus Christ? What are you going to do when you get home? Right? What will you do when you see people who do not know Jesus? You see, if we find that telling people about Jesus is difficult, it's not because we lack courage. It's because we lack an understanding of who Jesus is. And when we minimize Jesus, when we make him to just be like, you know, this one who brings us into the kingdom and then we are done with him, we are off to bigger and better things. We find this Christianity that promises a lot, but delivers little. The secret is to go back to the beginning. Sometimes when we ask Jesus to to help us as theological questions, you talk about in the beginning, it was not so. You may tell them about the concessions, but you'll be like, in the beginning, this was the intention. So I want to share with us three reminders for this last ten minutes that I have. Three reminders that are the key to living a life of more. I guarantee you, you know them. Guaranteed, you know them. But these three, they are the key to going from pain to joy. These three, they are the key to experiencing that more that keeps coming up when you feel like you've stagnated and you're like, man, I want more out of life. I feel like I was made for more. That is good. That is the nature of God in you. But let's go back to the beginning. So three reminders to help you live a life of more. Are you ready? Ah, just ask your neighbor. Ask your neighbor. Are you ready? Are you ready? It's very difficult to see if you have asked your neighbor to go of the, of the, of the mask, but maybe you can also just wave a little bit. You know, there are some things that COVID-19 hasn't stopped. Waving, waving hasn't been stopped. It doesn't pass COVID. Just try, just let's try waving in the house of the Lord. Okay, there we go, there we go. Hmm. Number one, the first reminder that is a key to living a life of more. Remember that Jesus is more, and therefore you were made for more. Remember that Jesus is more, and you were made for more. The key to us experiencing more lies in Jesus, not us. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Apart from him, we can be active, but we will not be productive. And so, the moment we are less connected to him, the life begins to go down. Listen to Ephesians 1, verse 22 and 23. It says, Bad things, all things, and that Jesus feet, and appointed him to be the Lord over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. I want you to listen to that second verse again. It says, The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. If you are in this person who fills everything in every way, what does that say about you? You are inside the person that, you know, it says, God put everything in submission to him. And you are in this person who fills everything in every way. What does that mean about you? You were made for more. But remember, in Christ. Ten times in 20 verses, in Christ. So if we take this truth and we remove Jesus, it's like buying a car and not putting fuel. Sometimes, 
Because we have removed what is called the X factor, right? The secret is to understand that Jesus is more. Therefore, I was made for more. If I take it the other way around, it, it, it doesn't work. Let us go back to a childlike faith to Jesus Christ. If you are in Christ, you are a completely new crea- creation. So you shouldn't be shy about some of your big dreams that look almost presumptuous. Don't be shy about being dissatisfied about the status quo. Don't be shy about your big dreams to start a company or to write a book or to release an album. Don't be shy about those things. Don't be shy about changing your friendship circles. When we come into Christ, we are a new creation. We are not inside someone who feels everything in every world. So don't be shy about making changes. However, remember the key is it is in Christ. This is what first Corinthians Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians 5 verse 16 says. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Do not look at yourself from a worldly point of view. Don't look at yourself based on your surname. Amen, Bazalwan. Don't look at yourself based on what your parents were able to achieve or not achieve. Paul says, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Then verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. This leads me to my second reminder. Believe that Jesus is more. The whole time I've been talking about understanding it. But I want to move forward and say, let us believe it. It is important to make something. And this is important particularly for those who follow Jesus for a long time. It is possible to understand everything that I'm saying right now and still not believe it. Understanding and believing are not the same thing. With believing, it leads to doing. So I'm I'm encouraging us to to be careful of, of what we call being a believer. Because sometimes we call being a believer something that I would maybe say is being an understander. We understand about tithing. But do we believe? Do we actually tithe? Does it make sense? We understand about prayer. But do we believe? Do we actually pray? We can explain it. We can preach it to others. But our belief is proved by our actions. Believing means laying down our ideas. Maybe we understand. But we have laid down our ideas. Believing means to obey. Maybe we understand. But have we actually done something about it? Have we done something about evangelism? Have we done something about prayer? Have we done something about worship? Because to believe is to do. Look it up in the original Greek. We have minimized believing to repeating a prayer. And that's the beginning. We must confess, right? But confession without action is not believing. A Christianity that doesn't change the way I live is a Christianity that doesn't inspire me to actually live a life that is made for more. The way we live must change. You know, there are some things that our families used to do that we must no longer do. Amen. There are some ceremonies that our families used to do that we must no longer participate in. There's ways of spending that we done that we must no longer do because we believe not just a 
understand. And finally, my third point is, if you understand it, if you believe it, the simple action, the actual doing that I'm inviting us to do, is make room for more. Make room for more. This building is about to fall. Before the building falls, we must do something before we experience what we believe for. Amen. And to say we believe and not do something, it is, James talks about it, I, I don't have the verse off the top of my head, but if faith without works is dead, I think that's what it says. Understanding without believing actually leads to pride. This is where we are. We don't believe in ourselves. Jesus spoke about peace with the Pharisees. We know, we understand it. We take the positions, but we don't put them into action. And the opposite is also a danger. Believing without understanding leads to religion. Right? This is where we inherit revelations, we see a meme, and we believe it without checking in the scriptures. This is where our, we worship Jesus, who is our idea, not God's revelation. Believing without understanding leads to religion. And this gives rise to the little Jesus syndrome, where we believe, but we don't pray persistently. Where we say we believe, but we are not generous. We we say we believe, but when it's time to worship, the worship team has to crank us. We crank us and crank us. I'm like, but if we say we believe, it must affect our doing. So I'm going to conclude by saying, make the room for them. AW12 has said something that really stood out to me as I learned this message. He says, every person is as close to God as they want to be. Every person is as close to God as they want to be. So my encouragement to you is to make room for more. You were made for more. That feeling that you have, that dissatisfaction that you have, that is the nature of God in you. But be very careful that you feed it with Christ and not more effort. Feed it with Christ and not just dead religion. Feed it with Christ not just an inherited understanding. That desire for fulfillment feeds that with Bible reading and prayer in the mind. That desire to prosper financially feeds that with faithfulness in tithing and faithfulness in being generous. That desire for influence feeds that with faithfulness in serving. There is no problem with you wanting influence. Make room for it. By putting into action what you understand. If we put these three things together, Jesus is more. Understand it. Absolutely understand it. Believe it. We soften our hearts, lay down our ideas, and then make room for more. I believe that we will not have room enough for the blessings that God has in store for us. Because if you are in Christ, you have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. From the Amen. I conclude by saying, 
you to do not yet have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can begin that relationship by doing those simple three steps that I've said. Understand today that He is the key to more. And you will experience more in your life. Believe it. Do something about it. We have our phone on the screen. Send us a text and somebody will call you and will help you begin following Jesus. And make room for more. Amen. I've definitely been encouraged and I've also been challenged. And the question that I have for us as we get ready to close in prayer um, is what is that thing that I say I believe but I'm not doing? Maybe I need to do something about it. For me, I believe that when we die, there's heaven and hell. And if I need to Jesus, I will go to heaven. And I need to tell them about that heaven. I need to do something about it. If I truly believe that at the end of this, there's an eternal consequence. I need to do something about it. I need to be more serious and urgent about it. What are we saying we believe, church? What are we actually doing about it? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that in Christ we were made for more. In Christ we were made for heavenly blessings that you have given us access to. Lord, thank you for access to heaven. That your kingdom can be here on earth through us. The kingdom of heaven is here. God, I pray that you would speak to each one of us about that thing, about those things that we have claimed to believe for so long, but we've done nothing about. Those things, Lord God, where we don't understand that you are more Jesus, reveal it to us. And God, I do pray for the person that is listening that doesn't even know you yet. Reveal yourself, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's turn our eyes to the screen for some church news. If you're joining us for the first time today or you're new to Liberty, we'd like you to know that you're welcome here. Thank you for choosing to spend your Sunday morning with us. Please send a WhatsApp with the word CONNECT to 761-86584. We would also like to invite you to visit our guest area in the garden. One of our team members We'll be waiting to give Weekend, you we have the opportunity to fast and pray together as a church, to be in Christ and experience today. more. So make sure you sign up with your we team. Uh, make sure you join us, whether it's through Facebook or WhatsApp. We'll be, we won't be gathering in person, but we'll be doing it on Facebook and we'll be doing it through WhatsApp. And so make sure you join in on Friday. We fast together and that's just a time for us to empty ourselves before the Lord and make room for more. And then on Saturday at 9 a.m., we'll be praying together. So let's pray together. If you have specific prayer requests, please send them to the church phone number. It's being shown up here on the screen. You can get it from the Next Steps area. You can ask around them if you don't have it. But let's come together in prayer this weekend. And then feel free to just check out what's happening in church um, on Facebook and different areas. Let's pray one more time as we close. Father, I thank you for every person that is here and this opportunity to gather. I thank you for every person that has joined on Facebook. I thank you for those that will join on WhatsApp. I thank you for many that will hear this message, Lord, that's kind of in many different ways that you have given us so many avenues to gather together, Lord. I pray, Father, that we would remember, that we would understand, Jesus, that you are more, that we were made for more, that we would believe
receive this and that we would make room for it and that God, we would be the church of Jesus Christ that is ready and preparing for your return in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's have a blessed week and we hope to see you next Sunday.